Leveraging large language models like OpenAPI's ChatGPT fits precisely with BuddyBase's mission to help turn data into action in a really efficient and effective way. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase, and I want to show you today how you can use the OpenAI automation action inside of an app. This is what we're going to build. It's a flashcard system. We put in a question like, um, what was the first programming language and ask it. In the background, BuddyBase will go and query chat GPT to get an answer and populate it on the back end. We then have the opportunity to ask ourselves that question. What was the first programming language? Oh, I'm not sure. So, According to ChatGTP, the first programming language was Fortran, introduced in the 1950s. It was designed to form complex scientific and mathematical operations. Did it, you get it right? No. Okay, and so we could gather up a library of these. I could try again. What was the first programming language? Well, according to ChatGPT, it was Fortran. It was, I say yes. That will then get wiped out and it says, hey, you got all the questions right, try adding more. On the back end, we have all the questions and answers. And if we want them to reappear again, we can just remove this guess correctly column. And all the questions that we have stored in the system will come back up again. Let's see how to build that. As I record this, only self-hosted BuddyBase users are able to take advantage of this block. And there's a little bit of setup we need to do before we can dive in. First of all, we need to sign up for an account on the OpenAI platform and get an API key. So once you've signed up, you can view some API keys and you can create new keys here. Inside of your docker compose.yaml file, under the app service, we can add a new environment variable called open API key, where we can use either an environment variable that we can set in .env or just directly paste in the API key that we're using. So I've added this to my .env file and then I've referenced it in my Docker Compose file in the environment variable inside of my app service. Once I've done that, I will stop my Docker service and restart it. So those environment variables are going to be available within the system. With that done, I'm ready to start building my application. I'll create a new app. I'll start from scratch. I'll call this my flashcards AI and I'll create the app. I'm going to use the internal database, so I'll create a new table, and this will be my quiz questions, and I'll create that. I get these default columns, and there's two more I want to add, a question column and an answer column. So I'll go to my automations tab now, and I'll create an automation, and I'll call this populate answer field. I want this to happen when a new row is created, and I'll save that. So which table am I referencing? I'm referencing the quiz questions. I'll add that. I want to use the OpenAI action. I'll click Save. So I can use one of two models, either GPT-4 or GPT-3. GPT-3.5 is faster, but gives less detailed answers. GPT-4 is slower and slightly more expensive, but tends to give better answers. I'm going to stick with GPT 3.5. I'm going to set up my prompt. Now, when you're constructing a chat GPT prompt, it's great to set up that context. So we describe to the AI what role we want to cast it. We are So once we've created the static prompt, it will be sent with every question, we can then pass the question itself. We're going to do that with trigger row. That's the whole of the row that was created, but we just want the question field. And we'll save that. So that will be sent off to OpenAI, and it'll come back with an answer. So when it comes back with the answer, we want to update our row. So I'll click the plus, update row, and save. Which table do I want to update? Quiz questions. What's the question? So I use the lightning bolt again. That's going to be trigger.row.question. What's the answer? Well, that's going to be what we get from the response. So step one outputs, response. So we've got that ready to go. 
And which row is it going to be? Well, that's going to be from our trigger.id. With that done, we can finish and test our automation. Quiz questions. Let's create a question. The question might be, how many countries are there in the world? I'll test. And on the left hand side here, I say, see the trigger happened, API happened, and the row update happened all successfully. And if we go back to our data table, into quiz questions, we can see the answer. There are 195 countries in the world. Now, it's worth noting that for factual answers like that, countries may be created or just dissolved since the language model stopped learning. So it's worth double checking these kinds of things. To be able to use automations in our application, we have to publish the application. And then when we want to run them, we have to use the published app rather than any preview app we might want to use. So that's the back end ready. Let's create the front end. We'll start with creating a blank screen, and this is going to be the create question screen. I'm going to set the access level to basic, which means someone needs to be logged in to be able to do this. If I set the public, it means they don't have to be authenticated at all. Admin and power are both elevated roles that you can use to segment your app based on roles. I'll click done. And inside of here, I'm going to create a form. My form is going to be create question form create type and the schema is going to be my quiz questions. Now inside of this form, I'm going to create a text field, which is going to be, what is your question? I'll add a button inside of my form. I want it to align to the right, so I'll put it inside of a container. And on the container, align it to the right and give it some margin on the top. And my button is going to just say ask and call it the ask button. What I want that to do is save a row. Save a row from our create question form to our quiz questions. And we just click save. And probably the other thing I want that to do is I want it to clear the form so I can ask a second question. Okay, so let's have a look at this on the front end. And again, to use the automations, I have to not use the preview, but the actual version of the app. So what could I ask now? I could say, what is the best programming language? <laughs> and what was the first computer? Okay, so if I go back to my data on the back end, I can see what was the first computer? First computer, well, was called the ENIAC. What's the best programming language? There's no definitive answer. Fair enough. So let's design the flashcard system so that we can actually see these cards and use them. So I'm going to add a cards block. And this card block is iterating over all of my quiz questions. And it's setting the title, the subtitle, and the description. The title, I'm just going to set as flashcard. The subtitle I'm going to set to be my quiz question. And I get that from, well, new cards block question and save. And then I'm just get rid of quest, the description. I have three flashcards here. So I'm going to add a button inside of each card. I'll just say guess. And what I want that to do is open a side panel that's going to have a question inside of it. So I'll add a side panel. I'll call this my answer side panel. Inside my side panel, I'll have a title. So just say answer. I'll have a paragraph, which is going to have the answer. And we're going to set that dynamically in a second. And then I'll have another title, which will ask, did you get it right? And then a container, which has two buttons. One for yes, and one for no. And we got our container to maybe stick them over there, and maybe change the no button to be 
red. Okay. So how are we going to dynamically set the type, the answer? When I press this guess button, I can use the define actions to do some things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update a couple of state variables. One for the current answer. And I use the lightning bolt. I'm going to get that from the flashcards block answer and save. And one for the current ID. Lightning bolt. Want that to be the ID of the flashcards block. I'll save. And then I want to open the side panel. So clicking these buttons is going to set those state variables and open the side panel. So when the side panel opens, this answer then should be the state variable current answer, and we can save it. So let's preview that and see if that looks how we expect it. So what was the world's first computer? Well, I'm remembering that was the ENIAC. Um, electronic Brilliant, 1946. Well, there's probably some disagreement over that when not there's, but yeah, that's what um, flat chat GPT says. And what's the best program programming language? Oh, so it's basically, there's no definitive answer. And then it gives some Python, Java, JavaScript, C++, and Swift for reasons why um, each of those might be good in different circumstances. Did we get it right? Yes or no? How many countries? 195, is it? Okay, so the answer is 195. So we have this flashcard system. The right answers are coming up. What we need to do now is get the yes and no button sorted out. Well, no button's pretty straightforward. Uh, if the no button gets clicked, all we'll do is close the side panel. Job done. For the yes button, it's slightly more involved. We want to submit a form effectively. We want to save a row. And to save a row, this actually needs to be wrapped in a form. So I'm just gonna add a form component and put my yes button inside it. I'll just call this correct answer form. And this is going to update, which schema is going to update? The quiz question schema. So the yes button, I'll define actions and I want to save row. Which data source? The correct answer form. Which table? The quiz answers. And now I'll set some columns. Well, I want to check the ID is going to match the state variable of the current ID. And I need some way to check whether or not this question has been answered. So I'll save this, I'll go to my data tab and create another column called guessed correctly. I'll save that. So when I am submitting this form, I want the ID to be the current ID, but I also want guessed correctly. I'll just say yes, and we'll save. So with this cards block, I'm gonna set a filter on it to say, only show when guess correctly is empty and save. So I guess correctly, that's going to not be visible there. So let's check this out. What was the first computer? It was the ENIAC. I'll say yes. My row has been saved. That question is gone. We didn't close the panel. I need to fix that in a second. What was the, what's the best programming language? There isn't one, but you could have Python, Java, JavaScript, C++, and Swift, I think were the five answers. So guess, I did get that right. So I'll say yes. How many countries in the world are, oh, there are 195. I'll say yes, I got it right, amazing. It says no rules fine, but actually we probably want to say when no rules are found, um, you've learnt all the cards, create some more. And lastly, I want to have a link up here to the create new card. So I'll go to configure links, I'll add a link, create new, use the drop down for our create question and save. And there we have it, a flies card system where we ask it questions. It goes and finds out the answers to those questions. We then have a system where we can test ourselves on those answers. Stephen King, L. Ron Hubbard. 
I did not get that right. Okay. But I can get it right next time. It was L. Ron Hubbard. Yes. And it's done. This might seem like a really trivial example, but there are loads of ways that you could use ChatGPT to enrich your data. This is a repo of awesome ChatGPT prompts that we'll link to in the description below. And it has lots of ideas for um, acting as an English translator and improver. Maybe we have um, a tool that checks the English and gives tips on how to improve the writing. Pronunciation, plagiarism checker, um, act as a character or some, and some, we have a chatbot that we could use to be able to work that through. There are loads of ways that you could use an AI tool like ChatGPT to enhance your applications and allow your colleagues to be able to make decisions faster and, and be more productive. We'd love to see how you use this action in your applications. Let us know in the comments below. We hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.